Today I'm joined by Mark Davis, the founder of Moment Motors, and we're here at the Fully Charged Show at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin. And uh, I think you're, you've kind of stolen the show. I've been watching to find a moment to talk to you, okay. and the entire show you've been like swamped with people. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, I mean, look at this. All right. You take. Tell us the story about how this thing so, started. So, fundamentally what we do is we take classic cars and turn them into electric vehicles, right? And our goal from the beginning, I, I named the company Moment because I think for anybody who's a car person, there's a moment you become a car person, right? And sure. it might be because your dad took you on rides <laughs> on Saturdays, it might be some car you saw in a, in a, in a magazine that just you know, struck you, but I want to be able to make that car something that's accessible for you. And I, I've been a lifelong classic car owner and aficionado, right? And I know that it's fun and as wonderful as driving a classic car is. And it truly is an experience that people who haven't had it don't really understand what it's sure. like to get out of your car and be approached by somebody like every time you get out of your car. And they go, oh my God, it's beautiful, right? right. And, and they want to engage you. They want to tell you stories about it. And it's wonderful. And that experience is, is truly incredible. However, it's often kind of partnered with this experience of driving around with a lot of anxiety about whether or not your car is going to make it through that next stop sign, what that sound is, what that smell is, all those concerns. Right. And so I had all of that <laughs> too. Smells, I, yeah, that's, it smells, exactly. Like, is that coolant or is that <laughs> getting right? Like is that you clutch? Exactly. Yeah. And, and so that that kind of takes what's a normally a, just a fantastic experience and turns it into something that is really annoying for right. somebody who is mechanically inclined and it turns it into something that's devastating for somebody who's not mechanically inclined. That, that, then you end up on the side of the road with a you know waiting for a tow truck. Right? Right. So the idea was, hey, can we can we give our customers something that is all of the fun and the enjoyment of ex the experience of owning a classic car with none of the the hassle and and absolutely just seamless fun and enjoyable experience. They can just get in, turn the key, and go, and that's it. Yeah, I kind of feel like this is the last part of the puzzle. So if you're looking to buy a new car, there's so many awesome cars. I mean, just look around. It's like the Neutron and all the Teslas. Yeah. If you're in the market for a new electric vehicle, problem yeah. solved. Yeah. There's going to be more and more, but I mean, just the options right now are amazing. Right. But this is that thing. We all have that neighbor or that person who's like, I just want to take that old car and keep driving it. Exactly. And so anybody who like doesn't want to buy a Tesla or doesn't want to buy an Audi, do this. Yeah. Like, what's that car that you love? What's that thing in your garage that the tarp over it? Like, pull it out. Swap it out, call Mark and... Yeah, and so <laughs> uh, you're, you're describing really the genesis of it all, right? Which is, I think that cars are something for us, right? They're not, they're more than just transportation. Especially right? for Americans, exactly. right? It's I like totally other, agree. People from other countries don't fully they understand that. They don't quite that. get it, right, right. exactly. And I, I think that you're right. It used to be when you couldn't get an electric car, this industry existed for people who were trying to get away from right. big oil and they would right. take an old Geo Metro and they'd right. put a forklift motor in it and they, and they thought it was really cool. Now, there's no reason to do that. There's an endless supply sure. of new EVs out there. You can buy a used Leaf for seven grand, right? And it's, yeah. You're fine, right? Like so. It, this is not about transportation. This is about having something that you can be passionate about. There's no, there's no describing what it feels like to come out to a parking lot and look at a sea of Camrys and Accords and BMWs, and then you see this chrome glint uh, from your car. I mean, it just puts yeah. this smile on your face, right? Yeah. So that's true, right? So now that's where we are, right? Which is, it really only makes sense for these classic vintage cars to, you know, to do the conversion. It doesn't make sense to do it to a Geo Metro anymore. But this produces something truly unique. This is the kind of car right. I, you know, I, was, I think I, I was talking about before. Like, I drove this car over to meet with somebody at the Four Seasons, and I literally had the entire staff of Four Seasons come out, and we're uh, hovering over the car because they just they're enamored by it. It's a yeah, beautiful car. It's really such a is. cute little car, right? And everybody just loves it. The question mark I have for you is, like a customer, how does that work? Do I have sure. a car that I bring to you? Do I go, hey, I'd love an old 912. Like, yeah. how does that work? That's an excellent question. So I think this happens in multiple ways. Sometimes the, the person is so passionate about the car, they already own the car, it's been in their family, sure. or they, and, they, and they just, they want it to no longer be an internal combustion engine and they want they want to do the conversion. Right. So that happens. I do have cars here that, 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 that were brought to us. However, I think that because classic car ownership is such a, um, it has all of the, the issues that we talked sure. about, right? Some people have always wanted to own a Mini, for se. But, it's but a labor of love. It is, is and, and they sit there and they say, well, I'm not gonna <laughs> buy one because I know I can't work on it, right? So they'll come to us and say, help, help us 
help us make sure. our dream car, right? <laughs> right? So we do go through the process of finding them a car to, to convert, we try to help cho you know choose a car that we think will work well you for restore them. restore it to exactly. Well, we can do that. My advice typically is the restoration process is usually more expensive than buying one that's already been restored, right? Got it. It's a very long, involved paint is a very, very, sure. very expensive thing. And so it's nice if you don't have the car already to be able to go out and find the car that you that you want and then do the rest and then do the, the conversion. Got it. So that's that first step. Then once we got the car in the shop, the first step is always it's the obvious one, which is you gotta take out the engine. Right? We will do as much um, engineering as we possibly can before putting, you know, before doing that, because we want to make sure that we do this properly, right? But what we have developed are a set of modular systems that we can take a look at. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. If we want to go I was just that. I was just talking about that yeah. earlier. I love how you've got it kind of look like a crate engine. Yeah. Like you take an electric motor and you've you've, you've got the nostalgia factor. Well, you, you, I saw that yeah. and I was like, what is he what is he doing with yeah. a yeah. you know yeah. <laughs> well, and you, a small block? But or you something. hit on you hit on it, right? Which is people love this is a classic car, right? So you, when they come up and they talk to you about it, they love it, they ask you all these questions. Sure. The instant you tell them that it's electric, the thing they want to do is see, right? They don't right. know what that means, they don't know what it would look like. And when you open the hood, if, if it's just a bunch of wires and a big black box. Or in the case of my Tesla, it's, it's nothing. It's, it's nothing, like, right? There's a trunk it's such a, a letdown, right? Yeah. It's such a letdown. And so part of classic car ownership is that hood open experience of showing. And we went to a class, we went to a car show, and there were you know Tesla owners there, and it's just so funny, they open the hood, <laughs> and it's just like, it's almost just like this, you know, it's this anachronism, right? Like, sure. yeah, I open the hood, what am I looking at? I'm looking at a storage space, right? right? It doesn't make any sense, right? But that's what you do at a car show, right? So the classic car ownership experience is about experiencing yeah. the, what, and we want it to look good, we want it to look clean, we want, yeah. it to, want them to feel pride when they show it off, right? Yeah. So um, anyway, we're talking about, I don't know if we, we maybe yeah, do that go, over by the- Yeah, let's, go, let's go over there. Sure. That belt, by the way, what is it's that belt super running? Super cool. Oh, that's an AC. AC. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. these cars aren't like bare bones. Like you can no, have you can have, you can have just about anything. So, you know, we were talking about the conversion, and so what we tried to do here is we tried to develop a set of reusable components that are uh, modifiable and and uh, adaptable to just about any car out there, right? So that means kind of designing a set of mounting plates and a, and a set of transmission adapters and a set of uh, you know motor mount rails that can be swapped in and out depending on the car we're putting them in. Right? Got it. And so we can. So the parts in between kind of stay the same, exactly. and maybe this is. These are the motors. One. They're made by a company um, uh, called NetGain. Uh, we also work with another company called HP EVS that makes okay. motors as well. And we've developed essentially the uh, the uh, the systems that hold those motors in place and, and adapt them to the cars, right? And that the goal there is to be able to do this engineering as. Um, Take as, as little time to do the engineering and more time to do the you know, yeah. to, to do the conversion. Um, and this also allows our our systems to be repeatable. It allows the the you know the maintenance and the long term reliability to be there. Um, and we do the same thing with our battery boxes too, right? So we have a very modular battery box design because we need to fit batteries in different parts of the car, right? You can see in this in this BMW over here, we've got <laughs> we've got you know. A certain amount of space in the front of the car and a certain amount of space in the rear of the car and we need to break up the battery pack between the two so that we don't have you think about this you're taking out a, an engine that is say oh i don't know 300 400 sure. pounds right and then you're putting just this dual here is only 250 pounds right okay so the thing is when if, if all you did was take that uh that uh, engine out and put the motor in place and then that was it you you'd be light up front right sure. and then if you put all of your batteries 600 400 you know, depending on the configuration, yeah. the batteries in the trunk, you'd have a car squatting like this. Yeah. It would be a terrible handy car. Handy yeah. car. So we want to make sure that we put as much weight and as much of the um, of the mass of the of the of the conversion, you know, kind of where it originally was in the engine compartment, and then the remainder goes in the other end. But it's not so much as to set up, is to offset the, you know, kind of yeah. upset the balance of the car. So in all these cars, that's the case. That's you got, the case. You got Absolutely. The, the battery split up. Exactly. Brilliant. And that's okay. part, and, and that's why we have this kind of modular design. We're using Tesla Model S modules in these uh, batteries uh, boxes, so they are, uh, you know, we, we make them in kind of two box, three box, four box, five box, and that allows us to kind of break them all up in, into these uh, Lego bricks, if you will, and say, okay, hey, we're sticking these back here, we're sticking right. these up there, and then it all connects and it all works together and it all uh, creates kind of a, an integrated system. So the, the cool thing about uh, 
these Z's is there's a lot of room up here. Yeah. <laughs> and so what we've done with this car is we put a, it's got a dual motor from a company called HP EBS. Okay. It's got about 185 foot pounds of torque, around 165, 170 horsepower. It's a really fun car that's re well matched to this chassis. Um, and yeah, I'll look at the numbers. It seems yeah, like you, it's, it's good. you're not and, going overboard. No, not going overboard. Yeah. And the, the goal is since you're keeping the drivetrain in, in, intact, uh, you don't want to overwhelm it, right? You want to make right. sure. Uh, you want to make sure that you're making a drivable car that's not dangerous, right? That is that is um, enjoyable and isn't going to break a bunch of things, right? So this kind of strikes the balance. What do you do down uh, down uh, beyond the transmission? Do you keep it? So we keep the transmission. That's and that's a critical part of what we're doing, right? Because I think we're trying to preserve that driving experience, right? So, I, so can, I can shift yes, you through the, the gates. This has got this five five speed. Check, check this out. The, yeah, it's there. It's so all there. I can have an electric car. Yes. And a manual transmission. This this is it. Let's talk about this, right? Because <laughs> I think that this is something that, that is hard for people to understand, right? Which is most modern electric cars don't have transmissions, but that's because we can get in deep into this. If, I don't know how deep you want to get into it, but that's because they're able to build uh, electric motors with very high RPMs. Right? Sure. And that means 20,000, 20,000 yeah, RPMs. Well, they're the usually 18,000, like a, like a uh, uh, Tesla's 18,000 RPM, right? So that allows them to pick a single gear. It's essentially like second gear. Yeah. And, and then what you can do is you get a ton of low end tor torque with that, but then up on the high end, because you don't run out of RPMs, you're able to go to 150 miles an hour because right. you've got a, you know, you, you, your, your motor's able to go to that level of uh, that, that many yeah. RPMs, right? The challenge is that requires a specific architecture. It means, it means that it has to have the motor directly bolted to the differential, There's, to spin something at 18,000 RPMs and make everything right. work. It really has to be precisely machined and work. Right. So when you, when you look at a, a commercial EV, their drive units are always in the in the end of the car that's doing the driving. Right. When you've got a car like this, where it's a front engine and a rear wheel drive, you don't really have that option. You'd have to cut out the entire back area and mount in uh, and make a huge structural you know, modification to it. And it's not that you can't do it. It's totally doable. It's but just a lot of extra. That might not be what the customers and, really and, want and, either, right? If I, and if then I the brought car, this car, yeah. the car kind of ceases to be the car, right? Yeah. This is still a Z in every way that, that, that it ever was. In a way, then, yeah. you, you just took yeah. this out and you added this. Like, exactly. And everything else is kind of and the it, same, and, yeah. And it really is, the driving experience is just that, right? You feel like you're driving a 19 78Z. It has all of the the enjoyment of it. Yeah. it. It handles the same way. It accelerates, you know, even faster. Yeah. It has all of the all of the fun and excitement of driving this car. And and just you've removed this anxiety and you've removed all the, the mechanical Seriously. issues. Seriously. Right? I see the Woolwood brakes. You guys yeah. Upgrade, so we'll, all that so kind of we'll stuff? do things like we'll upgrade typically uh, brakes because you got a lot more power. You and you, you probably want to, we also have there's a another kind of geeky thing about it. You no longer have a source of engine vacuum. So Oh. Yeah, and the most yeah. most braking systems are boosted with, with engine vacuum, right? And so right. you either have to replace that with an electric pump, or we do things like we'll modify the um, uh, the brake the pedal ratio so that uh, so that it's actually easier to you know to brake the car without uh, assistance. So gotcha. it just depends on on the on the, on the, the application. Um, Sometimes we'll rebuild the transmission. Sometimes we'll uh, have to rebuild some of the, you know, the components. One of the nice things about choosing a car like the Z is it's well supported by the aftermarket, right? Yeah. There's anything that you want. So this has complete coilover suspension on all, you know, it's on every uh, on every corner, and that's something that you can just buy, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we have a little extra weight in the back because of that uh, because of the battery box, and we just talk to the suspension guys and say we have another 200 pounds back here, and they say try these springs instead of those springs, right, and that right, all right. works great. So. It's really so so did the old the old two eighty Z did it have power steering? Uh, this you could get it. Uh, this doesn't. This particular one doesn't have it, but you can. Have, you can. Okay. Have it so if I if I had a car with power steering, you you preserve that. Yeah, right? we can do that. It depends. There's a lot. There's different ways to do it, but you can do it either with an electric pump, or you can do it with. Um, they do have uh, like this. They actually sell uh, an electric power steering kit for these. So Got it. These. And air conditioning. Air conditioning. You can do that. You can do it a variety of different ways, but you can have that absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. We don't have to like get down to the nitty gritty of it, but. Price, like anybody who's watching this video like, has the same much? question, like I want that, I want that. So just price, just rough, I, I rough think figures. That the, I think the thing about this to understand is there are kind of two components to think about. The, there are the actual things, the motors, the, 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 the um, mounting systems, the bracketry, the adapters, all that kind of stuff. There's the physical prices of the, all of that, sure. as well as the batteries and the battery boxes. There's the physical price of all that. And that can be anywhere from say 20 to, 30, $35,000 worth of parts. 
And then there's the labor of doing it. And if we've done the car before, it might be less. If we've done the car, if we haven't done the car, it might be you know more. Yeah. Uh, and so. I typically tell people it's kind of in that 50 to 60k range on top of the price of the car, but it can go up, right? Sure. It, it can definitely sure. be north of $100,000 if it's depending on depending on how much range you want, depending on how much power you want, depending on the components you're using. There's a lot of different options, and I guess the condition of the car also that you're starting with is important, right? So we talked about replacing all of the suspension in this car. That's not a free job, right? That's definitely something that no. takes takes time. But I mean, that kind of stuff. If I wanted to, I could kind of spread it out and right. say, let's get this thing running. It might be a little bumpy. I'll take care of it over time, and exactly. it doesn't have to be all front. Exactly. You know, the prices. I mean, like we talked about, there's a lot of custom work here. Look at this. By the way, the machining. You guys do all the machining. Yeah, we, we don't do it ourselves, but we, we do all the designs. We do all of the. Yes, we really. Unbelievable and machining. And it's important to us. Like yeah. we talked about, it's when you open the hood, you want people to be very happy. With that was the first. I, I mentioned this earlier. I think yep. we just say the end. But when I walked by, I was like, is that a crate yeah. engine? So I thought you were just kind of like showing like maybe the before and then I no, looked at it and I, I was like, That's look something at that. you touch. And I think that this is this concept is out there, right? I think that a lot of people think about, you know, hey, wouldn't it be great? Crate motors have been on the market forever, right? right? The, 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 uh, the industry has provided small block Chevys and small block Fords yeah. and you name it, you know, for, for ages and ages right. and ages. And there is a, a desire to kind of have the, the equivalent electric version. The thing that we focused on when we're building these is adaptability to the uh, to the to the to the different car designs, and so we try to be as extremely you know extremely efficient in space and and and, and um, how much you know how much this room this takes up because what we find in every car you're trying to get as many batteries and as much capacity yeah. in the car as possible. And if you've got a, a, a motor system that is, you know, maybe looks like a V8 or is, 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 is very, um, uh, but is inefficient with its space, it doesn't leave as much room for your batteries and all, and all your right. balance. So this, although I think this looks very cool in automotive, <laughs> it doesn't look like an engine necessarily, right. but, it's, right. but that's the same kind of idea. Same idea. Right. And then, yeah. It's really nice to be able to pop the hood, like in this Cobra over here, you know, this uh, yeah, that's, this factory that's 5 replica. Right. This is just a work in progress, right? It doesn't yeah. have um, it doesn't have the battery boxes in or anything like that. But look, the goal is to be that. able to look at that, and, right? You want to pop that hood, and you're like, oh, something powerful is going on here. This is exciting, right? The, the yeah. first part of the puzzle yeah. is you got to show people, like, if yeah. you like speed, yeah. then this is a no-brainer, right. one. And two is you, yeah, you show you that off. Right. Just a million. And when it's done, it's gonna have, it's gonna have its controllers mounted around here and a battery box here, and it'll all be here. And this will be like in the middle, like a shaker kind of thing. And you'll Unbelievable. Look at it. And it just excites people. It gets people excited. This is a car that I have all the time. People go, yeah. oh, you're killing this car. It, this car is all about the rumbling through too, or the 427 and, <laughs> and the side pipes. And I'm like, yes, but. <laughs> I think that you're going to be very happy with the result. The, the performance is going to be mind-boggling, right? It's right. going to be super fast yeah. compared, and and, and we're, we're not making it ugly inside. You're going to be able to pop the hood. You're going to be able oh to show God. it off at a car yeah. show and be excited about that. Unbelievable. So, so this what? is actually part of a new thing that we're doing. It's kind of a, uh, we're calling it our R-Line, which is we're developing a set of packages that we, that we're, that are essentially you know, kind of bolt in for these for these replica cars. Oh, so okay. this being a replica car, there's a couple others out there that we're working on, a 550 Spider, a 356 Speedster. The idea is though, you can you can order these from these manufacturers, any color, anything you want, and then we'll bolt in the drivetrain and be able to, and it's a much more turnkey solution sure. versus there's a lot of, you know, restoration and, and right. other, other work that needs to be done in an actual classic car. So, so you do both? We're doing both. We kind of have, and that's why we have them both here on, on display. This is, you know, like I said, this is something new for us. We're we're in the process of making this work, but this is this is kind of exciting. Thing. We'll so, if someone's watching this and they want to get in touch with you, yes, um, we'll put links to all the stuff sure, in the video. Sure, fantastic. But where are you located, and what like what's your sure. range of operations? Yeah, so we're, we're located here in Austin, Texas. So yeah. this oh, is kind of sweet. home court for us. And okay. it's, uh, it's fun. Um, uh, we have a, uh, a shop here on Congress Avenue. Uh, South Congress, for those who know anything about Austin, it's pretty pretty South uh, Congress. Um, and uh, but uh, kind of the best way to get in touch with us is through our website momentmotors.com, or you can follow us on Instagram which is at Moment Motors, or on Facebook, you know uh, Moment Motors as well. Um, I think 
you know, the best process is to get in touch and talk to us about what your what your dream car is, what's your moment, sure. right? And we are happy to work with anybody who has a, uh, a car that they already have, that they love, and they're passionate about, or if they're, like I said, you know, if they, they don't have it, but they know what it is. And yeah. that's a fun journey to go on. Yeah. Um, that process is, uh, you know, once we start that and we move it through, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but we, every car gets a, a build blog. So they have a, pri so. they have a private, private build blog that they can share with their friends and family. It's this journey, right? Yeah, we're we're yeah. going on this exciting adventure with you to, to make a dream car, and we're you know, excited to share that with you. So. One thing I didn't ask you before is where do you charge? Ah, that's great. So is it uh, kind of in yeah. keeping with whichever car we're talking about? Yeah, there, yeah. it's usually where the fuel <laughs> where the fuel point uh, thing is. Brilliant. Uh, but you know, when we're doing some body work, so one of the things we did on this Porsche, which is kind of fun, it's a unique car. Uh, you know, Porsches always have their their gas filler right there. Yeah. And so because we were doing body work on this one. We thought we could be a little cheeky and be like, hey, you know, for somebody who knows what's going on, they're going to come up and go, what's going on here? Right. see that, right? And so we hit it in this car, just back here behind the, behind the license plate. Oh, plan. nice. So it's back kind of a, yeah, I mean, it's, kind it's, of a it's all, it's all, you know, everything is kind of customizable, but there, you see it, you know. Yeah. There. It's, uh, you know, we just try to make it, you know, if we have the option to make it kind of cool and interesting, we do that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious how much weight savings there is by the time you pull out the motor, the actually, gas. Actually, there's no weight savings. It actually, these, the, the problem is that the, the batteries weigh so much. Sure. You actually yeah. are increasing the, the, the. So, in that yeah. case, then how much we're talking it's, about? It's usually only two, 300 pounds. That's, most, right? It's not, I tell people it's like having your, you know, slightly larger friend in your backseat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, thank you so much thank for taking you. time out of your day. I have been here. By the way, if you're hearing all the yeah. whirling cars around here, we're at the Circuit of the Americas. Exactly. And I uh, find the juxtaposition hilarious, <laughs> right? Here we're here talking about EVs, and there's just roaring V8s driving around. All the time. <laughs> that it's was okay. not lost on exactly, me. Exactly. Right, exactly. <laughs> but thank you so much for taking the time yeah. to meet with us. We were just thrilled when I saw your awesome. email. We went to the website, we checked it out, and we were just like, "Awesome! I'm so glad you like that it. time. Make time. Well, and we've been walking around, and you have been swamped all day. So I hope you've got." A chance to get, grab a mic. I actually have not eaten anything, <laughs> but I appreciate it, and I'm and I'm so glad that it was interesting. I hope it's interesting for your viewers. Absolutely. I think it's uh, maybe we'll come back out here sometime and, awesome. and, and see Love more to. of the operations. Yeah, you go drive stuff. them, you go experience it. It'll be really fun to do that. Awesome. Thank All you right. so much, Mark. Thank you, guys.